hey guys welcome back to our channel it's a girl funny lungu back with another reaction video if you're new welcome if you're not welcome back thank you for 21,000 subscribers you guys are the best keep liking commenting sharing everything that you guys do never goes unnoticed we're very very grateful um today i'm going to be reacting to rivet story how a british christian after studying judaism and islam ended up embracing islam so without wasting time let's get into the video Alhamdulillah, Nahmaruhu, and Astainu, and Astafiru, and Uminubi, and Atawakalu Ale, when I Udu Billa, he means Shururi and Fusina, who means Sayati Amalina, may Yati Hillau Fala Mudilla, who may you the Lilu Fala Hadiella, when I shadow a laila, Hail Allah, who had the Hula Sharikala, when I shadow and Sayyidana, Maulana, Muhammad, and Abduhu, or Sulu, and فقد قال الله تعالى في القرآن المجيد بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم قال رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أدين النسيحة صرك الله صرك رسوله النبي الكريم Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given this great gift of la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to each and every one of us. Alhamdulillah, myself, I consider myself to be very fortunate in the, uh, as was said by our MC today, I was born as a non-Muslim for the first 17 years of my life. The words Christianity and religion might as well have been synonymous for one another. So if I may, let me wind the clock back to the time when it all began. I was born into a Protestant household. My mother was Protestant, my dad and my sister were and are atheists. And I was brought up with this, and even at school you could describe me as a happy, clappy Christian. We would have a, a club called The Ark, and I would watch those evangelical Christian videos and all of these sorts of things, all of these activities. I explain this because it's important when you talk about a journey to Islam, a journey from dar darkness to light, when we talk about this, that you understand from where to where, from where I have come to where I have now reached. So Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala delivered me from this situation. And it was at a school for the blind, which was in Worcester, because I was partially sighted from birth, but then I became blind at the age of 14. So I travelled and stayed at this boarding school. I was born originally in Bournemouth, but went to Worcester. And from the ages of 12 to 18, I was studying there. Now for my A-levels, this is where I read about Islam. And I wasn't receiving dawah from anybody. I never received dawah uh, from a website or from a dawah table or even from friends towards Islam. It happened by me reading my RE classes at A-level about Islam. Now I was searching for dunya. I was searching for examination grades so that I could go to university, so I could get enough UCAS points. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose this to be the medium for me to have something rather better. SubhanAllah, the course was not even going to go ahead in the first place. The course, the RE at A level, it was only going to be, going to be running at, at AS level. If that had been the case, then I would not have had enough full A-levels to go to the universities that I was looking for. So, I would have not taken this, I would have taken English or chemistry or something else. Now, instead, or even on that first day, the people for, uh, at, in charge, for whatever reason, they changed their mind. So, for this reason, I was able to take the course. Now, after that, we had to decide, besides Thomas Aquinas and Aristotle and Kant and all these other philosophers who are famous and well-known, we had to study another religion. So, I had, to, I had to choose between Judaism or Islam. And I, by an irony, I chose Judaism. But the rest of the class outvoted me in that. And I was the one, ironically, I was the one who, who reverted to Islam in the end. But at the start, they were the ones that chose Islam, and I was the one who, who wanted to do something else. 
Because I saw Judaism as, as marginally less boring, Billah, and backwards than Islam. This is how I saw Islam. This is how so many people, as we know in this world today, uh, especially in the West, see the religion of Islam. Because they are not educated about Islam. And for myself, I never saw the, the, the choice of religion as a multiple choice question. I saw it as just Christianity or atheism. But when I got to read about Islam, then all of that changed. So I was reading about Tawheed, I was reading about Risalat, and I thought, was, was it really necessary that Isa salam had to be the Son of God? And then I read about Risalat and I thought, is it really possible that this person, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, could have led this incredible life, and I was only reading sketchy details, but is it possible that he could have led that life and inspired so many people and not been a prophet of Allah? And I, I really th felt that there was something special about Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And we also read from the Qur'an. And if you've ever read from the Bible, in uh, classes at school or anywhere else, then you'll know there's a differentiation in tone between the Qur'an and the Bible. The Bible, and you don't need to even explain this to somebody who is not a Muslim. They, they'll know whether they whether Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put it in their hearts to be able to admit it or not, that's a different matter. But when you have the Bible in front of you, you're reading stories of apostles, you're reading essentially a hadith of those times. If I can put it in the, those crude terms uh, of calling it a hadith. But a hadith of the disciples of Jesus alayhi salam. So, I read the words, literally the words of Allah, in the Qur'an and I saw that this was something special and also the unambiguous terms of, of the Qur'an contrasts starkly with the vague terms in the Bible. Now let me give one example of this. In the time, end of times, it is described in the Bible that seven bowls of anger will be thrown down onto the earth and four horsemen of the apocalypse and so on and so forth. And ambiguous terms which people cannot understand and cannot uh, fathom what the meaning of this is but we are getting complete descriptions in the Quran we're hearing about the oceans boiling we're hearing about the in the 17th Sipari it says that the earth is rocked like a boat at sea etc all of this we hear and this is uh, these are vivid descriptions so all of this led me towards uh, thinking that the Quran was the, the book of God I said my shahada in front of a smattering of, of non-Muslim witnesses. There was one Muslim, I didn't even know that you had to have two Muslim witnesses. But I was frightened to get out of, get out of the way to say my shahada, because uh, I felt conspicuous as so many people did do. But they were sitting around in the gathering saying, I believe this and I believe that. And I was, I, I'd been asking Allah Ta'ala beforehand, uh, in the weeks before that, please Allah, show me an opportunity where I can, I can show, I, I can uh, say my shahada. So I took this as my, reluctantly my op opportunity and I said, Ashhadu wa la ilaha illallah. In fact, I said, I believe that there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger. I didn't even know the Arabic. You may be wondering, what about my parents? Yes, they were shocked. They were, uh, they were upset and they were expecting this to be some sort of fad. So, uh, some sort of thing which was going to be blowing over. But as time went on, they realized that no, this was not the case. And it was one bombshell after another, I even felt sorry for them. You know, one day I would be coming in and, and telling them that I wanted to, uh, you know, I, I, I was a Muslim first of all, then the next I was telling them after my studies in university that I was going to be going away and studying the Qur'an uh, at a madrasa and then, then when they saw these clothes that I'm wearing now, and every, all of these, it was one bombshell after another. Now, the, as far as Ilm goes, I was at university in Southampton and this is, a, uh, is, this is to say that I met some friends whilst I was studying maths there, a course which I completed. But uh, Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let me meet two people who were thinking of doing ilm themselves. Now, I was inspired, I, after my course, went, I went and looked for opportunities elsewhere. Firstly, in the secular field, uh, the secular universities in this country, and that had its problems and complications. So I looked around North Africa when I realized what a madrasa really is. And I looked around North Africa and I looked around the Middle East 
and etc. I didn't actually physically go to these places, but I was replying to them. But these places were not replying. And there was a, a great wisdom from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this. And the, re the reason is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted something better for me. But I, didn't, I wasn't to know that at the time. And for nine months, I was looking for a madrasa where I was able to, to study. And I was on the point of giving up by March 2007. Then I made a fateful phone call via the embassy in South, the South African embassy to Madras Tunur, Mil Magfufin. I'd called up Mulana Hassan Murchi Saab Damabarakatuhu and I asked him, is it possible for me to be able to study an Alim course? He said, yes, it was. This was a course which was, as has been explained, it's in English, but the books are in Arabic, so that's uh, compliant with what's possible for me. And, uh, and easier than if I was going away into, say, the subcontinent and studying in a, in a different language. I was able to study in a way, most importantly of all, in the language of Braille. Now, I'll take this opportunity, if I may, for one minute. Uh, Malana Ulma has read to you, but I shall read to you from the Mas'haf itself. Braille is a unique language. Braille is a language of six dots in one cell, meaning one letter. So you'll have one, two, three, four, five, six. And I will allow, the, I, I'm sorry to the sisters who are, who are not able to see uh, my reading of this now, but they will be able to, inshallah, we can pass this upstairs maybe later. You will be able to come and look at this Quran later if you wish, inshallah. I shall read, I shall read from Surah Baqarah, inshallah. <laughs> Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Alif Lam Mim Thalika al kitab la rayba fi hudan lil muttaqin Alladhin yu'minun bil ghaymi wa yuqimun as salat wa mimma rizqanahum yunfikun والذين يؤمنون بما أنزل إليك وما أنزل من قبلك وبالآخرة هم يوقنون أولئك على هدى من ربهم أولئك هم المفلحون صدق الله العظيم This is not the only method by which a blind person can learn. In past ages, great shaykh did learn great amounts of ilm and have made huge contributions. For instance, Ibn Masha, his ustads, his ustads, they narrate that he would never forget something once he entered his brain. This is the sort of dedication he had to ilm and the sort of fazail we can link to his life. Uh, so many shaykh, uh, and we now see from amongst us that in this current generation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the ability not only to learn and memorize the ilm, but to be able to refer back to it. Every book right up to Bukhari. I mean, I've shown you this Quran here. This is only one volume of the Quran. This is five sepahras. Six of this will make one Quran. Uh, will make one Quran. You'll have 32 of these to make one Bukhari. But all of this, a blind person can refer back to. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the ability. The computer will give us the... Uh, the ability to access even more ilm. Malana Umar has said that we would record our classes and listen back to them at nights and weekends. We'd also uh, have soft copy books on our computers. We have a mechanical voice which sounds somewhat like Stephen Hawkins, if you imagine that. And a person can read both in English and Arabic, because now there is an Arabic version as well. And we can also, uh, we can also type and use the internet and all these mediums can be used. A person, you'll imagine in a madrasa, you'll imagine the blackboard and writing on the blackboard. In our madrasa, people will study, they'll have the braille version in front of them, and then the sheikh will be sitting in front of them at the desk, and they'll read their sighted version, and the two will go hand in hand. So this is how it's possible for people in the current age to read and study. And almost all of this, which you'll learn in a, in a current Dawlalum for the sighted, we will learn in the Dawlalum for the blind. Alhamdulillah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taken me from the point where I didn't even think I could, if I embraced Islam, I would be able to perform one salawat, one salah, or do one fast. 
to the point where he has taken me for Hajj, for Umrah, and this last year to see Masjid Al-Aqsa as well, and to do the six years uh, and complete my, uh, my Dawah Loom studies, including Tensi Powders of the Quran, Alhamdulillah. And we ask Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala that he enables us to start a madrasa as the efforts are now being made over in this country. And that much work is taken, not only teaching the blind, but the sighted, from myself and Malana Umar. Jazakallah khair for listening. Wa akhiru da'anawana an alhamdulillahi rabbil What an interesting video. Um, it's good to see this that we don't get to see. I don't think I've ever reacted to a blind person who's converted or evaded to Islam or speaking about Islam in general, you know. And it's very, very interesting to say. I don't know why my camera is full, but there is that factor of just enjoying what he was saying uh this should be inspiration not to just me not to just you but whoever we choose to share this with or whoever comes across this message many people i think i've reacted to many people actually saying they realized that they the religion they were born into wasn't for them and because of that they usually um convert to other stuff islam or whatever it is that they choose and it's interesting you know what is it about the pentecostal um denomination wasn't he comfortable with i wish he gave us more details and at the end of the day as long as i always say this as long as he finds what he's looking for in life the peace that he wants uh serving the god that he cherishes then i think that's something amazing and we should um clap for people that actually take the next step or take such a big change in their lives you know and um did he go blind before reverting to islam or did or was that after another thing is i'm very happy that he found um I'm very happy that he found a place where he could actually study while these other places were not um, responding to him. Sometimes everything, sometimes certain things happen for a reason. There's a reason as to why those other schools never got back to him. Not schools, I've forgotten the name. I know the name, but I've forgotten it. But the one in South Africa was more responsive, you know, it speaks a lot. So let me know what you guys think about this situation and... Um, Sometimes life is tough. Sometimes you may feel like giving up, but then you find something that's giving you hope. You find something that's pushing you to move forward. Uh, let me know what you guys actually think about this video, or if you have any relatable stories concerning this, feel free to comment down below. If there's anything you want me to react to, let me know down below. Just give me the name or the link, and I'll be sure to check it out. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in my next reaction video.